let's let's uh let's bring up our guest. All right, and so I want to introduce Thania Dunda. So, um, so I'm very excited. First of all, um, this is a, a comic that is a fellow pretty funny women alone. She is amazing. Um, Thania Dunda is a stand-up comedian, actress, writer, and producer, born in Kenya. Um, yes, Thania from Kenya. Or Thinia from Kenya. To keep it simple, she spent the first half of her life in Vancouver, British Columbia, and at the age of 11, her, her family moved to Charleston, South Carolina. And that's when she realized she was Black, y'all. Um, an actress based out of Los Angeles, you may have seen her on Shameless or Loosely, Exactly Nicole. All right, welcome. Yes, welcome. I want to say it right. How are you doing tonight? Uh oh, we oh, can't, oh, oh. We can't hear you. Are you on mute? Oh, no. no the she's hush, not. Hush from she's the Empire Slayer got to her. Uh-oh. No. no. Uh-oh. Uh, let's see. I go. Do you see? Uh, yes. Oh, wait. It happened. It happened. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I plugged in a mic, but apparently I don't know how to work anything. So uh, I just unplugged it. I was like, that's not going to work out. So... It's okay. Let's it's see. the time of COVID. We can't do our normal thing and send over one of our guys to help set you up. <laughs> yeah, COVID, that would have not budget or nothing. That would have like really helped. Um, <laughs> I learned just how technologically unadvanced I was. Um, <laughs> just every every time, every time I get on the internet, every time it's just like, huh. <laughs> I do this every day. Every day I get on the internet and somehow I fuck it up. Um, <laughs> oh no, welcome, welcome to the therapy of the absurd. And so because we are therapy, we will fix your internet uh, internet affliction. We will somehow, before this therapy Thank session you. is over, we will figure out how to fix it. So everything I need. <laughs> some like amazing stuff going on. I want to jump into eventually like your bench comedy mic, but like how what makes a born in Kenya, raised uh -huh. in Canada, and then to South Carolina, where did acting and comedy come into the mix? Oh man, I mean, I think I think it started out with like my parents just my name, like why? Um <laughs> <laughs> why did you do that? Um <laughs> I moved when I was like three years old to uh, like from Charles uh, from um, Kenya to Vancouver or Canada um, comedy kind of I was always the new kid so I think it sort of just came with like having to constantly introduce myself and like make friends and meet people it was like a way that I could just like ease into people you know like mm -hmm. where people aren't just like what's going on? Who are you? You know? Um, <laughs> yeah. So I think like, that's kind of like where like it was born in me, but like where it like manifested naturally was probably about four years ago when I actually started doing stand up. Um, yeah. Now, were you doing comedy? I mean, were you acting before comedy or acting after comedy? After you started? Doing I, I started acting first. Um, um, okay. Yeah. So I, I mean, I grew up in Vancouver, which is like a, a huge just television hub and film hub. And I always, I was like always obsessed with it, but my parents were just like, mm, we're African bitch. You got to be a doctor or an engineer or, you know what I mean? Like they were just like, mm, that's cute. Um, but that's not a living. So I, I always like dabbled in it. And when I went to college, I dabbled some more. And then I was like, gonna go to medical school and I just like had a breakdown and I was like I can't do this I gotta like go act I think um <laughs> so so then I was like all right let's let's try this thing and disappoint my parents um you know like poverty is a dream you know like America is um full of dreams and being poor is certainly one of them and um I just auditioned for stuff. I got like really interesting opportunities. And then I sort of like hit a rut about uh, four years ago um, as like, I guess a lot of people do. And I was, I was kind of just like trying to figure out my voice and like what I wanted to say. And I was like very just like dissatisfied with all of the auditions I went on. Um, 
And uh, I had a really good friend who Wait, was, let me ask you something. Dissatisfied with the role and the audition you were getting or how you were doing when you were auditioning? Dissatisfied with the roles that I was getting. Okay. Or the, mm. the roles that I was reading for. They were all very... Um, I mean... <sighs> Here's the thing. They're, these people exist. They they are validated. You know what I mean. And it's so so. It's not like I want to shit on that. Um, it was. It just didn't feel like like there was a part that was missing. Like it, that didn't feel like authentic to me. Mm. And I didn't know like what like where that was coming from. And I had a friend who was doing stand up, but I like I never even like considered that that was a job like that you could just talk to people for a living I was like wait what um <laughs> so when she was doing it she would always uh call me to talk about jokes and then it became like this thing where I would write with her and she would pitch her jokes to me and then I would you know like rework them with her and we would sort of like bounce ideas back you know back and forth and she would perform them and there was like this great pleasure out of that. Like, I was like, oh my God, like I'd always go to her shows. And then she all of a sudden quit in 2016 and I like just felt this weird emptiness. Mm. And I was like, I, it didn't make sense to me. And then a friend was like, hey, wanna go to this mic with me? And I went and that was it. I was like, oh my God, I gotta do this forever. <laughs> <laughs> The comedy bug bit you. Yeah, yeah. Just like the, you know, like the the power plus the vulnerability and, um, mm -hmm. you know, and the just the conversation that you can have with people without, you know, like just by like gauging their body language, like you can really understand people. And it was just, it was just everything that I was searching for and I had no idea. So, <laughs> yeah, that was... That was long. Sorry. No, that was perfect. Dan, you know, um, I, I had another question. So Dan, I was, I was trying to have someone read my body language. You know? oh, 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 I wasn't. <laughs> Not I have no idea attention. what I'm saying, by the way. Whenever I do that face, th this audience has seen it before, but whenever I do that, I have no idea what I'm trying to do. I think this looks funny. It's just. It's because it definitely doesn't work. <laughs> Not at this point in existence. <laughs> so. Anyway, that's I it. love it. <laughs> Would you like you are very um one thing that you've highlighted is this kind of like space of being very influenced or, or being very interested. Would you say that there were any other outside influences? Like what your your collaboration with your friend is amazing. Like I, I just recently got into I don't even know if I want to call it well, I do want to call it collaboration. Like I've been kind of nervous about that. I've always thought, well, if someone else is writing the jokes, then am I really the comedian? If someone else writing the jokes, and interestingly enough, Kim Clevenger, who is a friend to the broadcast and a friend to everybody here, like when I we were on a mic, she said she gave she basically gave me this joke because I guess it was a joke that she wouldn't tell, but she felt like I would tell it, and it has like served me so well. But I always feel like, but is that my joke or is that Kim's joke? But she always said you can have it for free. And then recently, I got a comedy buddy. You know, Judy Carter says we should have a comedy buddy, so I have a yeah. comedy buddy, and we were we meet once a week and she made this suggestion to go along with this bit that I work on. I'm so single. And mm -hmm. she gave me like, I have the, you know, it's like your mama, you know, we elevate, I'm so single, da, 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 da. So she gave me a da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. And then the other day flappers is trying to, you know, they're trying to do big things. So they were like, well, Hey, we'd like to put up a clip of you. We're going to send you a clip. Like, you know, tell us what you think. And they sent a clip of me doing the joke, the the bit that she gave within the bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, I felt like, am I really the comedian? Like I felt like, you know, <laughs> like I know I'm the comedian, but it just yeah. But you know, even when I when I of course was excited to tell my comedy buddy this is what happened, she was the first thing she said was, Did they use our joke? And I was like, Well, yes, they used our joke. You know, yes, they did. So, yeah. so that is an to me to hear you talk about that was kind of how you segued in that you had been doing this thing with her. And so let's go back. How did it feel? Like, I guess if you're watching her and you're seeing her do the material that, you know, you worked with her on, how did that feel? Like, uh, it felt amazing. Okay. Like, yeah. It, it just like, I think 
like I, obviously like I think there are some jokes that are just so innate in you and when you write them like there's there's only like your voice in there you know what I mean mm -hmm. like it's not it it wasn't technically inspired by any you know, and like that like that's so loose right because it's like what does that mean because we're always like inspired we're like looking around and feeling and expressing ourselves so like it it felt awesome like I loved when she would do something and it worked like just the the ambiance you know like when you're in a comedy club and you hear the laughter and the excitement or or even when people like scoff at stuff like you're just like oh it like it triggered something in them and you're like yeah like it got the response that you guys were working on and it feels like a collaboration and i mean i guess coming from like before i did stand up i did a lot of improv and so like coming from that world it didn't it doesn't feel like somebody's robbing me it never felt like oh my god you stole a joke or like i could have performed that like it all it always feels like even when i pitch jokes to friends of mine um now like like the girls that i collaborate with now um it doesn't feel like mine it feels like it's innately theirs like i'm just i am just recognizing it and pointing it out and they're gonna make it the joke you know like they make it the thing like that you know? so okay so i had other questions um i wanted to go to the cbs cbc jfl pitch winner like i want to go to that but like i before like there's a whole lot of steps that we're jumping who else has questions here like this is also exciting to me Nope, or just me. Oh, no, I, I think that's awesome. The whole collaboration thing. I think that's definitely a part of it. And I think as, all, as long as, you know, people get credit for helping other people when it, you know, when it comes time, that, that yeah. doesn't matter. You know, did people laugh? Yes. Did people have a good time? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's and the way honestly, I look at it. I mean. Yeah. And when that person succeeds and they, like, if they're your real friend and they succeed, they see you and they're like, like if they're in a writing room, they're like you. I need you because you understand my voice. You, you know what I mean. So like creatively communicate. Exactly. Like you don't have to. Like if this person is like a genuine, like a real human being that you're collaborating with, because um, there are a lot of there are Ro there, robot, a lot of there, robot. <laughs> there's, there's some there's some folks out there, but um, <laughs> they look at me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Exactly. But like, if they're real, like they're like, your collaboration isn't going to end there. Like they're like the Chappelle show, like Neil Brennan was a huge part of that. And that was like a thing, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't think Neil Brennan ever felt like, oh, I'm being overshadowed. It was like, I'm just being here and I'm able to witness and help this like incredible thing yep. be even Happen. more incredible, you know? Right. right. Yeah. I think honestly, like, uh, people knew his name just as much. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've, I've witnessed that people that are successful are the people that stuck around their own little group, and they all help each other. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot oh, of no. the regulars at the comedy store, uh, a good chunk of them that are really good friends, actually started around the same time. They were going to open mics together. They were working mm -hmm. on material together, and, and yeah. it still applies. And I, I'm pretty sure, uh, even uh, Chappelle with uh, Don uh, Donnell. So yeah, they yeah, great. they're great awesome. friends. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it, they all started around the same time, and they just mm -hmm. grew. And you know, it, it's teamwork makes the Makes it dream work. There you go. I completely and, forgot. And then, <laughs> and then there's a quote that I, I uh, the Dana like that I, I say a lot too, and it, and it, I hold it with this too. A rising tide lifts all boats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I say that to people now. Just to, like, I, people get that from me. I'm like, Stefan, my collaborator. Um, is there anything <laughs> about comedy that drives you nuts though? Like, is there anything about it? Oh, uh, I was thinking about that. Um. I mean, right now, not being able to like do it in front of like live people, that sort right. of is driving me nuts. Um, she figured out the twist that we've all been dead for two years and you're right. <laughs> <laughs> We're all plugged in, literally. Um, Alex Dining's open, so 
<laughs> yeah. And you know what? There are places that are open. I just like, I'm not, I can't afford the luxury of risking getting COVID. Um, and not just for me, but for like others. Um, but that, that, I mean, that's just a selfish reason. Um, things yeah. that irk me about <laughs> comedy sometimes are, are, are like, and, I, and I'm like, I don't want to say this, but I guess I have to. Um, just like how yes, kind of like sens here. how <laughs> sensitive some some topics can be, and like how, um, yeah, just like there there ha like there has been like this sort of like cancel culture of of late, where I feel cancel like culture warriors. <laughs> yeah, like where like the vulnerability and like where you the safe space that you have to like talk about issues or or whatever's like on your mind can be so somewhat like overshadowed by like somebody else's like sensitivity or trauma and i'm like ooh girl you just got or boy man child whatever you got to go <laughs> you got to go work on that you know what i mean like this is not about you this is about like a bigger thing and like I think our job is to sort of like reflect society. And when we're not allowed to do that with like full permission, it creates sort of like this mind fuck, you know, where you're like, can I really voice this vulnerable part of me? You know, it's not, it's not free. It's some, it's, sometimes it's not free. Or like yeah. if you are free, you know, like if you don't, you're just like, like there are consequences. Yeah. And, um, it's sort of like that that thing and then like you know just like the regular stuff like sometimes it can be you know like a a bro fest like a, a my dick my dick uh oh my god and you're just like ah. still um right <laughs> okay, yeah well, women if you feel really insecure if your self-esteem is super low all you need to do is just walk into an open mic and you are going to be a goddess well, mm -hmm. they will be all over <laughs> you like they haven't seen water in days okay wait most you of the know? open mics i go to are female though <laughs> and i'm like yeah, you're doing you're you doing it. virtual <laughs> ones you're doing virtual yeah, ones like, and the open like the indoor actual people open, uh, you're gonna see that it's just a sausage fest everywhere. You're like, hey. oh. I believe it. I believe um, it. Um, yeah, man, I'm glad that you said what you said because my uncle wanted to ask you, are you really from Kenya and do you have your long form birth certificate? <laughs> <laughs> I am really from Kenya and you can see my birth certificate. If you <laughs> I, oh my lord, no shame. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, Kenya's so corrupt that like I could doctor that shit. Like so, mm, I don't know. Uh, like, okay. <laughs> that's dope. Um, no, interesting. I'll, I'll show it. But we want, and we want to see it. We want to see it. Like I want to see you doctor. No, I'm just, just kidding. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like I, my mom. My parents are in Kenya love. right now, and I was like, circle back and just like get me a new birth certificate. Like just <laughs> let's just redo this whole thing called life. Let's start at 18 again. Like, <laughs> do you have multiple citizenships since you lived in multiple countries or? or do yeah. I, 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 I have American and Canadian citizenship. I have Kenyan by birthright, but I, I had to forfeit a passport. You like, you're not allowed to have more than two oh, in America. Oh yeah. 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 So America doesn't let you have more than two. So, so I had to. By diversity. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Why can't you... I be a big citizen of multiple places? Do you want to pay that many taxes? Is that what happens, really? Not all always. right. <laughs> have, have you done comedy in Kenya? Have you gone back to Kenya and done any comedy? I have not yet. No. Are you, are that you was trying the... to do it? Are you trying to do it? Okay. That's, that, that is, was the plan, you know, before COVID, uh -huh. you know, Plandemic, pandemic, I don't know. Um, when you go I there, are we going to... When you go there, are you going to say, I'm Venya from here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to be like, I'm Venya, and they're going to be like, 
So is every other bitch. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's hey, that's Sarah here, bitch. You know? <laughs> that's Karen. You a fucking Karen. Like. <laughs> that is. Yeah. Um, now and Kenya, okay, Kenya. Besides having their own language, what is what is what what languages are spoke in Kenya? So um, Kenya like has a lot of different ethnic groups, or um, right. yeah. So there are five major ethnic groups, but the most commonly spoken language, like that everybody learns in like school, is Swahili. So like okay. Lion, Lion King, you know, you you got it. Rafiki, friend, Simba, Lion, like you know what I mean. Um, they're yeah, they're teaching you stuff. Um, <laughs> but then, like, there are five major ones. My family is Kamba. They're the wood carvers. Um, Maasai, they drink the blood or and they jump. That's the ones that you usually see on uh -huh. National Geographic. That is, that is. Kevin Bacon yeah. had a movie uh, with that tribe. Actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember Angelina Jolie. Hmm? What? Oh, the drinking blood thing. Oh, she did that? Oh, she drinks blood? Oh, no, no. with that just... last, like with one of her husbands, right? Wait, I didn't want the joke to go that long. That starts rumors. <laughs> it's supposed to be in there and out. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the Kalenjin are the marathon runners. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, and then uh, I was like, uh, the Luyas are the like Obama's Obama and uh, Lupita's peeps. Okay. That's them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Those are the major ones, but then there's like a lot of different, um, okay. like sub, and they oh. all speak their own language. Got it. Oh, wow. wow, that's where Obama gets his accent from. Mm -hmm, yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> not, not Chicago, which yeah. people just like, huh? Not, and not Hawaii, not Hawaii, <laughs> not Hawaii. I mean, I don't know where he got it from, but I'm like. I like teach a class, sir. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, he he does sound like someone who took some classes. And if you want people to fucking hear you, right? Yeah, yeah. Here's some yeah. ways to say syllables. Like everybody's gonna hear every syllable you say. Save some of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <the> <laughs> so I'm not familiar with Kenya too well in reference to. I, every unless it's been portrayed in the movies, and that's always, of course, a false representation of something. Yeah. Um, uh, me personally, like my family's from El Salvador, but when I go over there, I'm humbled because the way of living over there is very different compared to here. Um, mm -hmm. And on top of that, I can't tell anybody I'm over there because I I'm at risk of getting kidnapped. Even though I'm like fat as shit, I can still like I can five guys, and I'm I'm sure I'm gonna be good. You're but, not fat. <laughs> I'm floofy, but <laughs> oh yes, floofy. Did you, say, I love did you floofy. say that you thought you were fat, and then you said five guys, and I'm good because that okay, sounds like that... a sponsor. Five guys, five guys will sell you burgers. Uh, but um, it when when you go back there, do you feel like how different is it? And if at any point, do you feel like your life is also at risk because you know foreigners or people that live in America tend to be at more susceptible risk of getting held as hostages for ransom or anything like that. Like that's how it is for, for me on my side. Is it similar? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if it's like sort of like a privilege. I, I go so frequently that I'm not afraid. And I also am always with locals. Like my parents are usually there or my cousins so I've never really feared being kidnapped. Um, I am always scammed though. Uh, like there's always a scam, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which is fun because they don't think that I speak the language. So they're always like talking behind my back. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is an inherent danger. Like, okay, I will say this, not kidnapped, but like, so I was, um, we were traveling from Nairobi to Mombasa, which is the beach. And so like Nairobi is like the city and uh, cops will just like pull you over randomly. And like the cops there are not, corruption. you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we saw a sign that said like, you are now entering a corruption free zone. It was like, when did we get out? 
<laughs> Can you guarantee that sign without a brain or a gun? Yeah, and then also, like, I didn't know that I could have been scamming this whole time. You know what I mean? So, like, <laughs> oh man, all the way back there, gonna make so much money. <laughs> exactly. Like, let a bitch know. Um, <laughs> thank you for the sign. Like, America kind of needed that, but. Um, <laughs> But like any like so we get pulled over by the police and they're just like where are you going we're like the beach and they're like why and we're like we're on vacation and they're you know like I'm I'm with like some of my American friends and so of course they're just like mm, there's money in there um and so they didn't hold us but they held us you know what I mean so they were yeah. just kind of like you going to pay and like until it's enough and so it's kind of like the driver has to like be like twenty dollars, and then if he's like twenty more dollars, I'm gonna have okay. a okay. Okay, two hundred dollars. Like, kind of funny to like twenty dollars, twenty dollars. Okay, I'll take that one back. Oh no, that wasn't it. Yeah, um, one dollar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> except wow. for except for they've got those like uh like like things that you go over with the like. Oh, the toll, like a toll thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so arm. like, like you're not, you're not gonna survive. Your car will not make it. So you're kind of at their, um, yeah, you know, um, beholden, so, you're beholden in that moment. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So two hundred, two hundred got you across the spikes, or like, uh, yeah, I think we paid two hundred. <laughs> wow. But like, so but I guess this is because I, I, I have a, I, I wanted. It was a heist. Yeah, I was gonna say so. But like they, they had to know you were Kenyan, but because everybody else was American, they were like, "It just is what it is." It, no, it's that's common corruption. Unfortunately, that's like the same thing, yeah, the yeah. same thing in uh, Mexico, Mexico, the same thing yeah. in El Salvador. Wow, yeah. um, locals. I'm which sure. Is yeah, what I was asking. Yeah, like there's a South big Pomona. difference. <laughs> like, the cops are still bad here in the U.S., but have you seen corrupt cops where the legal system is basically not non-existent? Like, right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about turning that into a bit? Like, y'all are complaining. It's bad, but it's not corruption. You need to pay 200 bucks to go to the beach bad. Honestly, yeah. I wish I could pay 200 bucks, though. Honestly, with the shit that goes on right here. I, I have to tell you, <laughs> if you go on a date to the beach, it's going to probably cost 200 bucks. Parking, that <laughs> fucking weird shell shit she wants you to buy at that one hut. Um, <laughs> some other Suntan lotion, thing. a nice blanket. I don't remember that night anymore. Mm -hmm. like, an umbrella. Rental, you better an umbrella, bring an umbrella. Bikes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah I, the bike, the 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 where you you know we're both supposed to be pedaling. Oh, oh I see you're taking pictures. Go. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you can relate to this, Stacey. Is that like when you're there? There's there's a part of them that they, they know that you're you're you don't live there. They're yeah. like mm. like even for me, yeah. like I I look Kenyan and I speak the language. They know that I am not like. We have, an like accent. There's, we have yeah, an accent. Yeah, there's there's just even a the way that we move. Like we don't even have to say anything. They're just like you, you, you know. Uh, yeah. so, wow, wow. They, they see yeah. us walk through walls. They're like, what the fuck? I <laughs> I don't. So with me, I I haven't gone back to as much as I'd like to go to El Salvador. Uh -huh. I haven't gone back because it's pretty obvious that I'm not local like if for yeah. me to seem like i'm not local i would have to grow out my hair not wear makeup really and uh, get very humble like clothes yeah change your wardrobe yeah. everything has to change yeah the way that you walk your confidence even like even that is a thing like because wow. just the temp the temperament of people like you know it's just yeah. different yeah, I mean, if I went back to where I grew up, I would have to shave my beard, or they would do a terrorist call on me. <laughs> oh boy! Oh, stop it! You're so hella white. You blend with the wall. Stop well, it. Walnut, California, is kind of afraid of beards. What? Someone help me out here in the comments. You're, you're a garden gnome, gnome, right? You're a garden gnome. Are, right? Garden gnome. All right, so I want to. <laughs> yes, I am. Comedy, shifting to comedy a little bit. Um. So tell yeah. us about winning the JFL 2019 pitch competition. Like, tell us about that. Because, I mean, I like 
we're all comics and so we're all one congratulations even though i know it's 2021 but that's like that's big stuff tell us about it oh oh gosh um like what do I say about it? Um, <laughs> well, what is it like for? for what, well, I mean, if people don't know, just for laughs, it is just for laughs, a huge comedy festival in Canada, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. in Montreal. Montreal. Yeah, so, so tell yeah, us about the pitch. Being a pitch winner, like tell us about that. What are you um, pitching? So, what are you pitching? <laughs> so they they have a portion of the festival that's about uh, pitching television shows, and um, like you apply for it, and then they select five people per category and then they live pitch in front of five judges and like a room full of people it's like up to like two to three hundred mm. um people and you have five minutes to pitch so that's how it works um and you pitch your television show so you give a log line you have a demonstration you you know like you can have um a sizzle like you can you can do a lot of things you can dance you can do whatever um <laughs> Really, make it your own. Um, <laughs> so I, I um, winning that, I pitched a show called Domesticate Me, and it's just about a, a woman who's sort of like fed up with the rigmarole of, you know, um, the corporate ladder and decides to figure out like what life is really about. Like domesticate me in a sense of not just, you know, like being a housewife, but just like valuing life and mm -hmm. like what that means and the complications of like feminism. And um, it was a really personal project to me because I was, I sort of like grew up in that, like my mom was like an uber feminist or is, mm -hmm. and I grew up with the thought of like, marriage is not an accomplishment. It just is like, it's something that happens if you want it to, but like, girl, you don't have to do that. Um, <laughs> in fact, it might hinder your accomplishments. Um, and so like, it was just like this thing that I felt like I was battling because I then like, I, I fell in love and I was like, oh, well, how do I like, how do I make this stuff make sense? Like, how do I love this person, but like also like fulfill my goals? And like, so that was like sort of the question that I was searching with that. Um, and so that's the project that I pitched. Um, and I, you know, I, I guess I could have done a better job um, <laughs> pitching it again to you guys. But anyways, that's the project that I pitched. And, so old. Huh? So right. old. I'll buy it. <laughs> um, and I, uh, with winning, I really just felt heard. Like, obviously, like, when you win like at JFL, it's like a huge announcement and it's like super fun. There's like a party and you get meetings. And so I was just like, oh my God, my life's going to change. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, don't talk to me. Mm, I'm a star. Uh, <laughs> but, but like, but like that didn't I'm happen. The characters like that, that they know like, oh, she's not from Kenya. Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, and that's why, like, I, I, I do, like, an impression of my mom, like, during the pitch. Like, I'm just, like, you know, like, I talk about witchcraft and just, like, the way that I grew up and, and just, like, the weirdness of it all and, you know, just, like, the complicated way of just being, like, well, what now? Um, mm. And, uh, yeah, so, like, after I won, it was, like, obviously, like, being there felt really incredible and I made, like, amazing connections. Um and yeah, I just like, I, I did think that like my life was going to be different <laughs> and it, it's not, but um, I mean, it is different. Like I, I, it is different. I won't lie. But um, the biggest thing that I got from it was just being heard. Like I felt that like, I, I didn't know how the project was going to be received. I never really shared it with anyone and um, it just was like nice to like, I was like, oh, like other people are thinking about this and other people are challenging like what feminism is and other people are, you know, embracing a different side of themselves and just moving through life, you know, like asking and not knowing. Cause like, that was like the one thing that, um, so they, there's like a talk back and they're like, so what, you know, like, what is the point of the show? And like, why you? And I was just like, I don't want to pretend that I know anything. I don't. 
Um, I just want to ask the questions and I want people to feel like their questions are heard and that you can have these questions and not be a bad person. Like you can look at that, you know, um, like mom in the grocery store with like her battle bot stroller and be like, oh, that looks awful, bitch. But like also like <laughs> see a baby and be like, oh my God, you know, like, I, you know, I don't know. And so it's just like, there's just, it's, it's so complicated. Like our existence is so complicated and our roles are so complicated. And like, I like value my independence, but I don't want to gas up my car. You know what I mean? Like, so it's just like, these things don't make sense, but like, let's process them. Like, let's talk about this weird shit. Yeah. No, I well, um, um, well uh then you know we're we are uh, going a little late at the moment. I, oh, I I'm didn't so want to be okay. I didn't want to be rude, but um mm -hmm. but but we also don't want to ignore that we had a comment asking a question. Uh it's from oh. Oren. And uh before we we go to the next segment, um we just want to make sure we put that up. Do you see it? Yes. Oh. I do. They are very proud. I mean, they will never live it down. Never. Um, <laughs> Obama is um, like the prized possession. Like he won the election when he didn't. Like in Kenya, like they like people were just like voting for him to be president in Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> he was he wasn't running. So like, is his birth certificate legal? Um, I'm retired. I had to do America. Did you watch that shit? Right, right. Some of right. those people are assholes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they're they're very proud of Obama. Um he you know, uh he represents obviously like he's not a perfect person. There were drone strikes and there are things that people are not fans of and I might not be either, you know, but like <laughs> he he represented just so much for for people. So for that, you know, like nobody's perfect. And I think that we can accept that he, he did his best. Right. Like, holy shit. Like the last four years of somebody right. not doing their best. He, is landed, a, he landed a falling plane. And it right. was good, good job yeah. landing the falling plane. Right, right. It was definitely Sully. It was just like, oof, wow. <laughs> It's it's like comparing like an ex boyfriend like he was bad but he was not Cheeto bad like you know you're like and the, he has some bad things you know but he wasn't at least at least he wasn't like this guy that would be he wasn't even like, Reagan he wasn't Reagan bad like they kept comparing him to Reagan I go did over oh, two hundred members of his staff get arrested like, yeah no no. <laughs> no 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 I think I think Obama was an excellent and amazing president. I recognize the flaws that, that people have said, but it's just like, you can never understand if you're not in his shoes. And I can never pretend that I would even not make the same or worse decisions. So, right. well, um, um, yeah. how, how should people catch you next? <laughs> oh man. Um, I, um, I'm like, what am I doing? I was looking at coming up, and we wanted to know before, <laughs> before you get out of here. We wanted to know about the bitch bench. I, of course, you guys named it bench, and it's so easy to say bitch comedy as opposed to bench comedy. Like, is that <laughs> is that like that's because I, I was trying to say bench just now, but I found I, it sounded like bitch even in my own ears. Yeah. Uh, Freudian <laughs> slips. When is when is that coming back? Like, is that happening Zoom wise, or is that coming back? Like, what's going on with bench comedy? Like, what's bench you know, comedy? Like, we want to bring it back. We want to bring it back virtually or in some capacity. Um, we had it at this place called. Deli I'll, I'll talk fast. At this place called Delicious Pizza on Sunset right. in Los Angeles, and they have like this really cool uh, backyard like space. So we're thinking about collaborating and doing um something there where we can either have like people outside or you know mm -hmm. just uh do something really cool with that it's with uh maddie silverstein and nicole soul they are incredible comics and storytellers um and then where you can find me is um 
I am starting a podcast with actually Maddie Silverstein and this other girl named Emu Yu, and it's about cancel culture. And then I'm starting my own podcast. It's called Haven't Slept Yet with Fenya and because I have insomnia. So we're going to oh, get wait, into wait. that. The whole <laughs> name is Haven't Slept Yet with, Nith- with Fenya. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Haven't Slept Yet with Fenya. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I just I heard that as one sentence and I went, yes. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna do. <laughs> hey, to be honest, okay, though you probably thought of this podcast at like four in the morning because you were not able to get your eyes to close and you couldn't yeah. put your phone down, huh? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't put my phone down. Hadn't slept, and I was just like, you know, maybe, maybe wanting something, but like I was just like, you know, I haven't slept yet. And who could I have on the show to talk about insomnia? Like, that would be fun. Um, And then I'm releasing a comedy album at some point this year when I can get on a stage, and it's called Birthright But For Blacks. So, Mm -hmm. My dad took mine back. He's like, you didn't vote for Trump? That's your birthright. I'm like, no, the (laughs) shit. In the meantime, everybody on here, um, please follow uh, Thinya uh, at I'm... Then yeah, but you guys yes. see the spelling because like all the time I've been saying, oh it, yeah, do you guys see the smell? I'm like I'm just the terrible American, you know, whatever is phonetically yeah. there. That's what I'm seeing. I'm yeah. you don't have to say terrible in American and this, <laughs> just kidding. It's the same <laughs> I thought true, true. Really, really <laughs> cynical there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no, true, true. But you guys see <laughs> it uh, at I am underscore N T H E N Y A on Instagram. Is um, that is that everything? That's the best. That's, that's everything. Yeah. Good.